We're going to keep this show going. Are you ready for your next comedian? Yeah. He is the CEO of Kaizo Health. Put your hands together for Dr. J. Yeah. What the fuck is up, party people? All right. All right, all right. Dr. J is in the house tonight. So yeah, man, I'm just trying to soak this all in and enjoy the moment. And I would not even be here if it wasn't for Joe Folt. Let's give it up for Joe. I mean, Joe is like the planet's most favorite Democrat. Like, everybody loves Joe. And you know, Joe is like on me about this. He's like, dude, you gotta do this. He's like, you speak, you know, you got a great company. Like, you just, you get so much growth out of all this. He's like, you just gotta do this. And every fucking cadre event, he's like, dude, you got to do this. So finally, I was like, cool, I'll do this. And then I realized it was an evil plot. <laughs> it was an evil plot. Because you know what? Joe was just seeking vengeance on me because he found out I was a Republican. <laughs> Bastard. So as you guys know, most of you know, I'm a chiropractor. Anybody? <laughs> you've been a chiropractor? Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. And a lot of people think that chiropractors are not real doctors. You're supposed to boo now, boo, boo, boo. Thank you, good, yeah. And like, seriously, like, what is a real doctor? Is a, a podiatrist a real doctor? I mean, they're real doctors? I mean, they're cutting your toenails and wiping that nasty antifungal cream on your feet. Like, that's not cool. What about, what about dentists? Are they real doctors? I mean, think about what they do. They stick those x-ray plates into your mouth. It like scrapes up your gums. And then they put on their lead coat and hide behind their lead wall. And they shoot your face with ionizing radiation. And then they drill, woo, woo. We all love that sound. They drill your teeth. And then the icing on the cake, they stick mercury, mercury, one of the most poisonous substances on earth, into your mouth. I'm like, that's worse than what the fucking terrorists get at Gitmo when they fail waterboarding. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I'll tell you what, what really gets my goat is the primary care physician. Are they real doctors, the PCPs? Or what I like to call the pharmaceutical coordinating pimp? <laughs> that's right, that's right. You know, there was a recent study that showed that 17% of Americans, 17% take three drugs or more. That's crazy, right? And, and you think about, like, what is it doing for you? Is it actually fixing the problem, or is it just covering up the symptoms? I mean, it's like taking your car that's driving down the road, and you hear this rattling, you take it to Billy Bob, the mechanic, and he says, hey man, I can't help you with that shit, but just turn up the fucking volume, dude. <laughs> fixing shit. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, the whole side effects thing, the side effects thing, even worse than the conditions that the drug is actually for. So like high blood pressure, you know, that's a big problem in this country. People aren't eating right, and you know, their blood pressure's going up, and like, that's not a good thing. So they go to the doctor, and they get a pill. But the unfortunate thing is that the pill has a side effect, and the side effect is depression. So they go back to their doctor before they go jump off a bridge somewhere. <laughs> right? They go back to their doctor, and what do you think the doctor gives them? Another pill. Another pill, thank you. An antidepressant. But here's the good news. The side effects from the antidepressant are uncontrollable urges to have sex. <laughs> yes, to have sex. To binge eat. And to gamble. So I'm like, wow, okay, maybe I need some antidepressants in my life, I don't know. But the real deal is, like, okay, so now you fix the hypertension, you fix the high blood pressure, and you think you're not depressed anymore, but the next thing you know, you got herpes, you're 121 pounds overweight, and you're running from the fucking Russian mob because you bet $36,000 on the Hungarian dodgeball team. It's like, what? It's crazy. And what's even crazier is that chiropractic many times, it's people's last resort. Man, they're showing up to us after they've tried everything. They've been to their primary care doc, 
They've been to their yoga instructor. Man, they haven't even been to their weed dealer. It's true, they have. I know the weed dealer, he tells me. <laughs> so anyway, so you know, after they try all these options, like they only have about two choices left. It's either me or the shaman with the bone through his nose. And by the way, the shaman with the bone through his nose, it doesn't really work for people because his copay is three chickens and a goat. <laughs> yeah, man. And people are ashamed to come to the chiropractor. I mean, they'd rather tell their friends they got a hand job at the strip mall than actually admit to coming to see me. It's awful. It's fucking awful. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, people. Do you know when people love the chiropractor, when they believe in chiropractic? When? At a party. Because I'll show up at a party and some dude comes up to me and says, hey, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a chiropractor. Oh yeah, doc, man. Start doing this whole thing. Hey, hey, man, my, my neck is really bothering me. My back hurts too, but you know what's really got me down? Like, no. Anal itching. <laughs> hey, bro, listen. I got you covered with your neck and your back, but for that ass problem, for that ass problem, you need to see a proctologist, a real doctor. And by the way, if that doesn't work, you can check out the shaman. You got any chickens by any chance? And then the worst thing is, they fucking get into my office and they say things to me like, hey doc, doc, don't crack my neck. Don't crack my neck. It scares me. I'm like, what? I'm like, you do know that I'm a chiropractor, right? Like, that's what I do every single day. It's not like I snuck into your house late at night, waited in your closet, and then when you went to go pee, I like did a whole Bruce Lee maneuver and adjusted your fucking neck. Like, you came to me. And like, I've adjusted literally tens of thousands of spines. I mean, tens of thousands. You know, and it's like, I'm not sitting there doing my thing and like adjusting the neck. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I look down, and I'm like, oh, shit. Hey, Mary, call the coroner. I think we just lost another one. <laughs> I mean, come on. Man. That's it. But I get it. I, I understand. You know, people have health problems, and that's why I became a real doctor. Woo! Yeah, Woo! thank you. Thank you. That's why I became a real doctor. And you know... I love taking care of people and I, I have empathy, like I feel for these people because I know I have my own health problems too. So, I mean, let's just take poop as an example. <laughs> like, when I was younger, when I was a younger man, I would poop and it'd be like an unripe banana. I mean, it would come out hard and firm and smooth and clean and like two pieces of toilet paper and I was out, I was done. <laughs> Not anymore, oh no. I mean, I have not had a clean crap since the Clinton administration. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> oh man, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. And the crazy thing is like, you know, I'm sitting on the porcelain throne and I'm just doing my business. I'm minding my own business. And all of a sudden, the most random things happen. Like my nose starts to run, just randomly. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what do I wipe first? I'm like, my, my face? Do I wipe my butt first? I'm like, doing a balancing act on the throne, trying to do this and this at the same time. And I don't have those kind of athletic skills because I'm Jewish. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But you know what? That's why we got to enjoy life. We got to relish in these experiences. We have to enjoy time with our loved ones, our friends, our family. It just means everything in the world to me just relishing life's experiences. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was out with some friends. We were in Virginia, went to this great, great seafood restaurant. Great seafood restaurant. And of course, I ordered the tilapia, because it was on special. I like tilapia. And we had a great time, man. We were like hanging out, we're eating, we're drinking, we're just laughing our asses off. And before, the, before I knew it, the night was like, ready to be done, and everybody's going home. So I get into my car, and I'm driving, and all of a sudden, my nose starts to run. And I know the prisoners are at the gates. Someone's knocking on the door. Somebody's ringing the bell. Now I'm driving across Memorial Bridge. 
and I see all the memorials and the monuments in the distance, and I see the Lincoln Memorial, and I'm like, unless I'm taking a deuce on Lincoln's lap, my options are pretty fucking limited right now. <laughs> so I'm just praying, like I'm like, I'm like this, I'm praying, but in my car. Right? And you know, I'm, I'm like breaking out in the shit sweats, you know, like I'm like sweating. And I'm like, I'm like squeezing my ass cheeks together. I'm like, oh God, dear Lord. And like my legs shaking. Y'all know about the leg shake, right? Legs shaking. And I'm just praying. I'm like, please, just give me some green lights. Green lights, green lights. Now get to the first one, green light, yes. Get to the next one, green light, yes. Next one, green light, yes. And then boom, red light. And then I knew, then I knew I was done. And I just remember thinking to myself, am I really gonna shit my pants right now? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, now I'm sitting in my new reality, right? Yeah. And I got about five minutes until I get home. And I need a hazmat plan in a hurry. So I'm driving home, finally pulling to my garage. And I'm like, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna close the garage. I'm gonna take off my shoes. I'm gonna take off my socks, take off my pants. Take off my underwear. So I'm literally butt naked from the waist down. Luckily, miraculously, I have no idea, but my shirt and my jacket, clean. I'm like, cool. So I clean up the best I can. I use every piece of unsoiled clothing to literally clean myself up. I throw it all in the garbage, and then I gotta get from my garage to my house, and I have to go through an open air courtyard. <laughs> now, in any other city, you know, you see somebody walking around half naked, and it's like, Oh man, that, that's a crazy person. But in DC, it's like, oh man, it's just another drunk congressman. <laughs> that's no big deal. But yeah, so I, I'm like, all right, so now I'm getting from my garage to the house and I'm thinking like, what the fuck am I gonna tell Courtney, my sweet, beautiful, gorgeous girlfriend? What am I gonna tell her? I'm gonna tell her I was getting a hand job at the strip mall and left my pants there? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna tell her like there's a a pant thief in the neighborhood or some shit like that. Or maybe I was just at a congressional after party. I don't know. And when I got to the back door, I knew, I knew I just had to come clean. Well, at least as clean as the guy who just shit his pants. So I opened the door and I did not have a pant leg to stand on. And I look at her and she looks at me and she's like, Jay, where the fuck are your pants? I'm like, baby, it was an epic battle. It was epic. But ultimately, the barbarians were victorious. And I told her the rest of the story, and she said to me, baby, do you want me to go get your clothes out of the garbage can? And I said, that is true love.